Don't ask. <laughs>
you know, Jeff Duke, people mm -hmm. like that. You know, you've always had a bloody BMW hat on or a BMW T-shirt. Always t -shirt. in a bob hat. You know, so we'll just let you follow your heart. We know you're not stupid. You're not stupid. You're a clever girl. You're doing what you want to do. Mm. And like everything that you do, you're giving it 100%. Mm -hmm. And that, that's all minimum I've ever hoped for and can ask for. Mm -hmm. It's that simple, really. Fair enough. That was a good answer. Okay, so I really like this next question. Oh. It is by Mike Hassel, or Biking it, with Mike. Is it a low, if you say that, is it a low baller? No, no, no. Oh, right, okay. it's, it's just, um, it, I'm interested to hear your answer, that, oh, okay. that's all. Um, so Mike has said, look forward to seeing this, as in the Q&A. My question would be, if he could have any bike from any era, which would it be? No restrictions due to body type or size. So you don't have to think practically with this one. You can kind of just go with... I know exactly what I want. Oh, look at that. Go on. My first choice bike would be, not necessarily for the road, it would be for a track probably, but I would love... See you later. See you later. See you later, Dave. I would love a Francis Beard, Manx Norton. Okay. There was one on the front cover, a classic bike, donkeys years ago in the 80s, and it's got a light green, like Morris Green or something or other frame. Silver tank, mm. just a, a road holder, but I would like it with a long stroke engine in it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the Manx short stroke engine, brilliant engine for the day, but the long stroke engine, it's just, it's a worker, it's a thing of beauty, and that would be my ideal bike. So that engine that you're describing, is that like that little model we've got at home? That's a short stroke. That's a short Because it's stubbier. Yeah. And double over red cow, so you've got like a big head on it, and it comes in, there's a long barrel on it, and it's just a beautiful engine. Mm. And my second choice would be a Ren Sport BMW. Me. Yeah, because like I have no idea when it comes to all these old bikes and all these different like See, engines I, and stuff. I was brought up on tales of Jeff Duke and my dad seeing Jeff Duke and John Surtees at the TT. Mm. Um, Jeff, I mean, all right, I'm 58 now, but Jeff Duke was always a hero of mine, I think, because of my dad and things like that. Mm -hmm. And um, watch all the videos and stuff, but I've had a couple of Nortons, I had a couple of Dommies and ES2 and things like that. I had a Dommy racer at one point. But for me, like I said, the long stroke engine, I'd even have an engine on the frame and I'd put it in my, in my <laughs> fireplace. I'll, Don't I'll need just, a chassis with it. I just love the engine so much. It's like the Excelsior Manxman engine. Again, they're just a thing of beauty. And uh, yeah, they piss oil everywhere, but just, mm. it's art. Do you remember when we had that um, little project that we never ended up doing? We should have done that. It was that Honda, what was it, a Super, super Dream or something. And we got rid of it. Yeah. That was a right skinny little thing, that one, it? Did the thing, though, there. But nearly 250. Mm. 252C. I think that lives in the Isle of Man, now. Really? Mm. It's amazing where things end up. Yep. Um, and then Mike Hassel has a final question, which he's jokingly said this because he asked me, and apparently I gave the wrong answer. Um, you have to give one thing up forever. What are you giving up? Chips or bread? <laughs> I love how you look down for reference. <laughs> Which would I live without? Chips or the bread? <laughs> bread. So you give up bread forever? Mm. See, that's what I said. Apparently it was the wrong answer. Why? Because he likes bread more. <laughs> so. I love bread, but... Mm. But... Body chips. doesn't. Exactly, you can't, can't give up chips. chips up. No. no way. Oh! Mike is delivering the goods. He came through with another question. On a more serious note, what's the best motorcycle trip he's ever been on? What's the best motorcycle trip that you've ever been on that you can think of? I swear this phone. Yeah. Noisy buggers. Been on a couple, really. Mm. Um, when I was younger, Going to the Elephant Rally. Mm. How many times have you done that rally? Three. Three? Yeah, two at, um, I think two at Nürburgring. Mm. No, sorry, 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 start again. Mm -hmm. No, two at Salzburg Ring. Mm -hmm. 
and one at the Bavarian Forest at Thurman Bang Solar. Um, and what was so good about them? Well, you're riding in February. Um, Sounds too cold for me, that dad. Yeah, I think I got hypothermia once, but that's, uh, that's another. That was outside. <laughs> that's a story for another day. That was outside Cali. We were riding along and I was falling asleep. Uh -oh. It was purely cold. Um, but yeah, the Elephant Rally, very good because, again, because it's the adventure, what you're doing. Like I say, you're riding motorbikes in February down to, to Austria mm -hmm. or Bavaria. Um, you're meeting some great people. It's a great... There's nothing like a continental rally with... I mean, you see some mad things. I mean, I remember once at Elephant Rally, there was a guy pulled up on a, on a BM. He didn't have a front wheel. It had a ski. It had a ski on the front wheel. What the hell? Another lad pulled up and his pannier had holes in it. And it's like, uh, why'd your pannier got holes in it? And when he opened it up, there was straw in it and a chicken. So he could have an egg for his breakfast in the morning. You know, it's shit like that. It's like Continentals are like... They're mad, aren't they? They're absolutely mad. Wow. But, you know, it's the, it's the, the travel, it's the adventure. Mm. It's a great thing to do. It's good to say you've done it. You've been to Dragon and things like that. Oh, the Dragon Rally? Yeah, in Wales. Yeah, I have a friend called Liz and also um, a, a patron as well called Nigel Tankard. And they recently did this one. And... Um, Liz always goes on a sports bike, like she's absolutely <laughs> mad. Yeah. Uh, oh yeah, if you don't mind. Not. Yes, please. Thanks. Um, He's a good lad, Stuart. All right. <laughs> um, so yeah, I've enjoyed the elephants. Mm. Uh, it's hard work, it takes mm. a bit of skill. I mean, a lot of people go um, on outfits. It, it's called the Elephant Rally because in the Second World War, the German they had the Zundat motorbikes hmm. and they called them the Green Elephant. All oh, right. And the fella who um, started the Elephant Rally was a fella called Ernst Levacus, who was a motorbike journalist, but he'd been a dispatch rider in the Second World War. And what he wanted, he wanted a rally where all these old muckers could get together and they could like pretend they were back in Russia again. Or, you oh, know, yeah, yeah. sort of like recreate mm -hmm. the conditions, you know, camping in the snow and all this sort of business. Yeah, yeah. And obviously it went bigger and bigger at the Nürburgring. Then there was a fatal shooting one year. Uh, the police shot somebody. There was a bit of a... What, a at the elephant rally? Yeah, there was a bit of a riot or something. I think biker right. gangs were sort of taking it ah, over. Ah, right, okay, okay. And then they stopped it at the Nürburgring and moved to the Salzburg Ring and then to Bavarian Forest. Right. So that's how all, that's where the elephant rally comes from. So it initially started like at the Nürburgring, basically? Yeah. Like, just around the Nürburgring? No, at the Nürburgring. They oh, just actually like, at it, in yeah. the car park type stuff? On the, on the circuit. On the circuit? Yeah. But it's like when you go to when you went to Salzburg Ring, you know, the circuits there and you camped all around it. I didn't realise. Yeah, and they have a torch sit procession at night and you're remembering the people no who way. didn't make it, who you know, who passed away during the year and stuff like that. <gasps> it's a proper it's a proper good thing and you're meeting people from all over the world. I remember we were in uh, Salzburg Ring and there was a Brit bike there and there was a note on it. I have such a body. Be back at your bike at like 4 pm, and he's like, Look at that, what's all this about? Comes back to his bike at 4 pm, and his mate, he was riding down to Australia, and his mate, I don't know, he was going to get across the sea to us, but he was going to Australia, and his mate was coming back the other way, saw his bike, at, they, they crossed the elephant, no. right? saw his bike, put a note on, so they oh. met up at, at the elephant. Little things like that. That's so cool. You know, you, it was that cold, you, your leather motorbike boots froze. I remember throwing them up fire for the thaw out, you know, and <laughs> stuff like that, but. Brilliant, brilliant times. So mm. you've got that side of it with the adventure and, and all that sort Ooh, of stuff. Oh, thank you, Stuart. Thank you very much, Stuart. Stuart, just stand there a sec. Just stand here for a minute. Stand here, come on. So this is Stuart, guys. Stuart hi, is... Guys. <laughs> hi, guys. And the brew boy. <laughs> um, but Stuart owns um, MC Hub in Darwin. What do you do, Stuart? In fact, hang on. What do you sell? Motorcycle clothing accessories. Yeah. AGV, RI, Bell, RST, bit of Alpine Store. Cool. And make good brews. He makes exceptional brews. I've got a nice cafe as well. What a nice cafe that my wife has. Yeah. So, yeah, if you guys are in the area, come and visit Stuart. He'll make you a brew. And his wife Marie over in uh, the Butty Van, she'll uh, sort you out with some proper scran. So, moving swiftly on. <laughs> yes. <laughs> you've got the elephant rally, you've got that side of it. Cold and whatnot, wet and whatever. Mm. Great, absolutely fantastic. But also, what I really enjoyed is when we did the Brown Wheel tour trips to. <laughs> That's a bit of an in joke. The Brown Wheel tour. 
to uh, Garmisch to the mm. bikers uh, Motorrad Treffen. Yeah. I mean, seeing Christian Pfeiffer. <laughs> Sad that. God Sad bless him. That, isn't it? Seeing Christian Pfeiffer, I mean, on his F800, doing what he was doing was fantastic. Mm. To see him on a K1600 doing stoppies, wheelies, mm. spinning it around with no arms yeah. on it, just riding. I remember he, like, he had it on full lock, it was going round and he was like this, weren't he, kicking back. Absolutely fantastic. And also, again, it was this quirky continental thing that we had all different people there with different stalls and things like that. Mm. But just the quirkiness of the Continentals, isn't it? Most yeah. of the Germans, the Austrians and mm -hmm. the Swiss and people are... They're just are, mad as a box of frogs. They are mad, but it all, all adds to it. And if you get a chance to go, go to Garmisch. And for all GS lads, you have the GS enclosure, don't they, where they can do off-road riding and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, I would definitely recommend yeah. going to Garmisch at least once. Because I think I went on a Yamaha, didn't I? I was a, a traitor because I, I didn't have a, a BM at the time. In fact, I actually did look at an F800R, if you remember. We went to Williams, didn't we? Yeah. And I sat on it and I couldn't agree with the foot peg position, like, where it was. So I didn't end up getting one. But when we saw Chris Pfeiffer's, like, designated stunt machines, like, they were obviously the F800Rs, but they were, like, super trick. Like, they had so many different things put on, like, obviously different sprockets and stuff for his wheelie in, and, like, he had all these mad things on it. And because it was that company that was, in fact, I took a picture of it, it was a white bike, yeah. wasn't it? Some, like, I think it was a With French a, company. It had a panda on it or something. Panda, yeah. Yeah. Oh, God, what... Memories are flowing back now. I can't remember what company that was. I took, that, that I took a picture cute. of that bike, yeah. Yeah, I've got a picture that's sat on that somewhere. Mm. But yeah, it is a proper shame um, that Chris Pfeiffer is no longer with us. Um, gutted news, but yeah. RIP, well, he was a legend. Got the memories and got the videos. 100%, yeah. Mm. Right, so we've got another question from Ollie Ray. So Ollie Ray also has a YouTube channel, Moto Camping UK. So you guys should check that out. He's a really decent guy. Um, he said, who is your favourite child? And then he's put, I'm such a dick, I know. <laughs> okay, it's slightly concerning that he's, he's pondering this. He's actually giving it some thought. Sean Baxter. It's not even a blood relative. He, he was one of my scouts and he's a good lad. If yeah. I had a son, I'd have him as my son. I, lo I love you both equally. I kind of feel like it's a diplomatic cop out, but. I love you both equally. Okay, I'll, I'll settle for that. Right. You'll we'll come and see this. Yeah. I love you both equally. Yeah, thought so. Okay, so we have a another question, which I'm going to have to read this because it's quite We're a big one. We've got any deep philosophical ones, have we? I'll we? just throw them in at the end, Dad. Okay. Yeah. Um, okay, so this is from Viscount Pasty. Viscount. Oh, V I S C O U N T. Viscount. Oh god, that's awkward. <laughs> Viscount. Yeah, Viscount. Vi what does it mean? Is it got meaning? It's a Viscount. Is um, a title. What do you mean a title? Duke Earl. Oh really? Okay, so Vice. I think I think I think that's how you spell Viscount. Okay, so Viscount Pasty, whose real name is Danny, says, Username Dad, your daughter is all grown up now. My kids are in their teens and one of them will want a bike at 16. I feel like I'm stuck between a rock and a hard place. I want them to ride two wheels, but I'm wondering if 16 is too young. When Kate started riding, were you nervous about her going out alone? And how did you deal with that? And then the second question, also, are you proud now she's a popular YouTuber? <laughs> a popular one. Thanks, Danny. I think you're giving me a bit more credit there, but... Question, question so, yeah. one. Question one. <laughs> so, basically, you're saying that he has teens, they're going to want to ride a bike... I know, at I'm just formulating my answer. I know, and I'm giving you time to do it. It's what we do in showbiz, Dad. It's just called... No, okay. No, just give me a minute. <laughs> I'll let you sit on that one. <laughs> no, it's, it was dead simple. It's simple, really, isn't it? I knew that it was going to happen. Mm -hmm. So, if you remember rightly, I said to you, I laid down a few, few rules from the beginning. You've got to wear all the gear. All Even the gear. if you're on a little Boatian 50, as you were. God, flashbacks. But we'll, but we'll say no more about that. No. You had to wear the full gear. And yeah. I know you felt like a prat at the time and you were a young girl and blah, blah, blah. However, yeah, that was... Full, the, full blown kit on a little 50cc that was the condition it was and that's one of the things that my 
fear factor indicator mm. went down a couple of notches yeah. because you weren't wearing a pair of shorts, you weren't wearing a skirt, some lycra tights or whatever, you had the kit on and at least I knew that if you came off Mm, it'd save you, half a chance. It would save your skin. Yeah. You always had a good helmet, you always had good gloves, mm -hmm. you always had good kit. Yeah. I say with the training, I took you out as much as I could. And obviously when you progress then to bigger bikes, mm. you you know, you started coming out with us more then, we were increasing speed, you were you were learning more skills, we were teaching you, we were mentoring you and coaching you, although you didn't know it, that's what we were doing. And it's led you to well, I'd like to think it's it's certainly been a part, big part in leading you to where you are now. It was a good foundation, mm. and I think training, good kit, is the thing. And you've got to instill in. I say it now to people, and I still say it to you, and I say it to youngsters. Everybody on the road when you go out on a bike wants to kill you. Mm. They don't know it. Yeah. They they just have no thought process of that, but everybody wants to kill you subconsciously mm -hmm. because of stupid things that car drivers do yeah you know and your head has got to be on a caster and like i say i've tried to pass on I my mean, knowledge to you mm -hmm. i mean I've, I've been knocked off many a time i mean on a livery patrol bike the number of times people would knock you off and it's like i never saw you mm. like really battenberg bike <laughs> blues on big noise but i never saw you Mm. So yeah, so if you guys like doing that, don't like get knocked off. You've got, you can only mitigate it. You know, you've got to be able mm -hmm. to mitigate it as much as you can. Yeah. And like I said, training, good kit. Mm -hmm. 100%. Definitely training. I mean, to be fair, like I think back when I was 16 and had a scooter, and some of the things I did, I think. Oh my god! Like I just didn't know how to control yeah. the bike I mean, it, proper. It's, it's, it's obvious. It's a big. It's a big leap of faith for, for a parent. Yeah, because, 100%. Like I said, once you. I mean, you. Because you going, do have to start somewhere. You were going from Atherton to Eccles. Mm. Now, yeah, I know them roads and where you're going. And unfortunately, a lot of times you're going in rush hour times, or mm. you're going in peak times. Mm -hmm. You know, so it's one of those. You, I just had to put it out of my mind. I think. I think every day for your mum was a living nightmare. Yeah. Because your mum. Worries. worries more and thinks more mm -hmm. and lets it out more whereas I it's there in my mind but I just try to keep my mouth shut and yeah okay sarah sarah you know same happened with me my dad off you go son mm -hmm. you know and it's like a little bird and you go you got to trust fly them, you? and then mm, she'll splat <laughs> boom <laughs> boosh great <laughs> yeah <laughs> Yeah. yeah. But what was the second part of the question? So the so yeah, trust trust your child. Mm -hmm. Well, they won't be children, really. Well, yeah, your child, but yeah, still child to you. Trust your youngsters. Make sure they're trained up, and make sure they wear the right kit. And even if it's down to the point of having a good pair of gloves, because you'd see you'd see youngsters on scooters, you see youngsters on bikes, you see adults on bikes, no gloves on. Mm. And if we pull them over and have a chat with them, I always say. If you come off this, what's the first thing you're going to put down? It, and it's your hands, isn't it? 100%. And I've seen skinned hands. I've seen shredded arms. Mm. I've seen an arm missing by somebody shredding it down a wall because he was wearing a T-shirt. Damn. Kit. Good kit. Kit. Mm-hmm. Fair ne enough, Dad. Next part answer. of that question. The next part was, how do you deal with... Uh, oh, no. Sorry. The next part of the question... Are you proud now she's a popular YouTuber? Proud of you anyway. Exactly. I knew I was going to say that. Whether I would, I'd be like cleaning bins or... You'd do a good job. I'd do a great job. They'd be the cleanest bins. Cleanest bins. Um, or doing YouTube. I knew I knew was going to be say that. It, it's a given. Both you and your sister, we're so proud of you. And... Just keep yeah. on keeping on. Keep on keeping on. And you've always got our support. Hmm. That means a lot. <clears throat> okay. <laughs> right. This is a random one from Scott Sanders. He's put UND. I thought you were saying und then in German, but it's username dad. Yeah, yeah, would. Um, a nice pint with Smith's scampy flavoured fries or bacon flavoured fries. I'd rather shove rusty bare wire up my ass. Than eat any of them. Yeah. You've got to like bacon fries though, right? No, not really. I think they're a bit. Not really bacon it. No. no pork artificially bacon it. Artificially bacon it. Pork scratchings or cheese and onion crisp. 
That's the one. That's yeah. the kryptonite. Okay, so we've got Ian. I'm loving these deep and meaningful <laughs> questions. <laughs> they really are testing you. I see this. So we've got Ian. 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 No lie. Ian. I A I N and then I A N. What a name. Love it. Um, Ian says. I think if he worked for I A M. Oh, it would be I A N. I A M. <laughs> just be too. I A M. I A N. He's, he's on to something here. Um, let us know if you're I am. I am Ian. I am. <laughs> yeah, I am. Oh, my God. So, Ian says, when did Username Dad first start riding bikes and what was his first road bike? Also, did he ride a moped on the road first, e.g. FS1E, SS50, AP50 or other? First bike that I ever rode was a, I think it was a Mobilette step through and it was like what your grandma Doris would have rode in the day. Really? It was a step through and you pedalled it. No. And, it, and then and off you zoomed. That's funny. Um, How old were you then, do you reckon? About 13. 13? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then, see my mum would never let me have a bike. My dad would, because mm. my dad had had bikes and scooters, but my mum would never let me have a bike. So basically, <laughs> says ex-police motorcyclist of 23 years I used to ride other people's bikes on the road um, but you're right SS50 fizzies yeah um, the Gorelli 50 and the NVT well lads had a Norm Villiers Triumph 125 so I learned to ride all them and uh, I was, well, like I said my mum wouldn't let me have a bike mm. don't let me do a lot of things my mum but then obviously I joined the Paw Paw and, uh, and I said to my dad, I said, Dad, I want a bike for going to work on it. I can't be doing with this, like. So he said, well, go get you one. But the problem was at this point, I'd not passed my test. And it was like, oh, bloody hell. So I went to Wigan and I bought this on the H100. Mm. Cracking little bike. Maybe about 93, 83, something like that. Anyway, I guess this bike had booked my test on it. As a ride round on it, I'll book my test on it. So I booked my test and I go to the test centre in Bolton. Right, right, we'll start off now. Started off, so I kicked it over and kickstart has snapped off. Oh no. And he went, oh that's it, like, you, you can't continue. I went, I'll bump start it. He went, no, no, test, test failed, you can't continue. I'm like, really? So then my dad come and we went and got another leave and I had to book another test. So oh, that's a bit of a farce, oh, isn't it? Was, it was, it was how it was in them days. So then put a new kickstarter on, booked another test, did the test and then I said I just rode around on that for a little bit and then I got um, a CX500 mm. and I used to use that commuting to and from Atherton to Awood and then well Middleton and then Awood and just progressed through various things GT750, a couple of Hondas and then I saw this bike for sale and it was like a Monty Python moment where clouds open and God comes out and he goes, oh, <laughs> and there's like sunshine. And it was a BMW S, a BMW R1000S. And it was smoke red and it had a little nose fairing on. And, and I fell in love with it. There and then I fell in love with it. I thought, I want that bike. Yeah. So I'll have a look at I traded in the GT750. I got that bike and I took it home and it was the biggest old nail in the world. Oh, you're joking. To the point that your, dad, your granddad had to take me one time from our house up to his house and we couldn't get it going so I put a tow rope around the handlebars and he towed me in the car. Bloody hell. Back to across Atherton and it was the most scariest thing that I've ever done on a motorbike because it was all over the place. What the hell? Anyway, we got it home, got it going again and what and I thought this has got to go. And uh, <laughs> this has got to go. And I think I traded it in and got um, R8 to GS. And that was starting my love affair with GSs. And it was just GSs then all the way through. Mm. Apart from the 1200, Liquid Cool didn't like that one for some reason. Mm. Um, yeah, so like I said, I had a few Nortons, I had a Veloset 500. My f me, actually, I'm lying to you. I am lying Don't to you. Why? My first bike was a Royal Enfield 125 Flying Flea. Mm. which I bought from Classic Bike Show at Bellevue and I did it up and I went from the, like I said, done more motor, mobile apps and things like that 
but I went from the 125 Flying Flea to a Velocet Venom, so it was a, from a thing that won't put skin off a rice pudding to, like I said, this Velo single mm. cylinder, which would break your leg when you kicked it over. <laughs> but what a machine, and then it was a couple of Nortons and, yeah. and things. But, sure. uh, yeah, it's old age, timelines get a bit mixed up. Yeah, I mean, I'm 30, my timelines get mixed up, so God knows how you feel. But, yeah, mostly in BMs, mm. when the KTM 1290, when you worked at Rocket mm -hmm. Centre, which was a rocket ship. Mm. The engine was phenomenal. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, the best of the, the rest of the bike fell apart around it. Yeah. But that engine in a GS would have been... The one. Yeah. Mm. And then got the S1000, um, XI, which you've seen on your video, which was an absolute animal. Fantastic bike, see it in sport mode. But you had to you had to be on your game with that all the time. You couldn't relax on it. Mm. You know, it was buzzy as well. And, yeah, buzzy. And, and then me and Sid Rashid, we took the GS out and the S0 XR mm -hmm. Mark II, if you will. Yeah. And yeah, that was a lot more comfortable, a lot easier to ride. But then when we went back and we swapped over, I got on the GS and it was just like, why did I ever leave from having a GS? Yeah. And that was it. I kind of feel like once you ride a GS, it's like game over for your expectations of comfort and, you know, just the ability to do everything. Yeah, I mean, I suppose that's why they're such a popular bike, aren't they? They are the... Yeah, Swiss Army knife of bikes, as They can do everything. Say. Yeah. yeah, and they're a, they're a great bike, they are a great... Like I said, going back to the 80s when I had the R80 uh, GS, and I so wish that I still had that bike. Mm. I so wish that I still had I mean, you see them now, and the price of them, it's like bloody hellfire. Yeah. But, but you never think like that at the time. No, nah, you do don't. You? Like the time when I nearly bought a, a Bruff Superior SS80 in... Uh, <coughs> It was a basket case and it was like hundred and odd pound or a thousand pound. It was some stupid amount back in the eighties. And your granddad Don says, No, you don't want to buy a motorbike. What's what's a basket case? Get one what's complete. And to this day I rue not buying that bike because it would have been worth like thousands. Do you know what? I have a similar thing. Um I look back from my photos from 2013, believe it or not. And there was a bike that came up for sale and you will not remember this because like literally it it was just so long ago and I was looking at bikes and it was a there was a Ducati 750 SS and like when you look at them bikes they're quite like bulbous and quite round and stuff with all the fairing on well this one was a street fighted one mm. and it was literally like when I was looking at a first proper like bike that wasn't a 125 and I was like oh dad what do you think of this and you're like it's an old Ducati Kate you're learning to ride you should really get something with warranty that's reliable and, and to this day you you were right well just butting in there mm. when i got that ducati oh, s4r yeah oh on the ferry absolutely <laughs> stonking bike absolutely phenomenal gets at ferry it won't start would it oh that was and no so... matter what you did yeah. but when it were going yeah, it you... was absolutely awesome yeah you enjoyed it didn't you it was phenomenal yeah. but temperamental exactly so it was probably like the best advice but i um i actually look at them bikes quite frequently on ebay and think mm. i think you wanted one of them like the, the paul smart replica thing didn't yeah you? like I, oh i like the ducati sport classics yeah. big time like and, and still to this day like if i could have a bike that i probably didn't ride because I, I heard they kind of like rode like pigs but to have it in your front room, like all polished, all nice, like yeah. I'd quite like yeah. that. Yeah, you're going. The odd sunny day, you go out on it. You're going look at bike, innit? Yeah. yeah. Me with me, Max Norton. Mm, that's it. Um, right, I have a question from Nigel Tankard. Again, one of my patrons, a lovely chap. He said, ask him, or ask username dad, about his MBE. Not many people know that you've got a bloody MBE. Tell him about it. How right. did you get it? Why did you get it? For what uh, reasons? Right. Are you proud of it? Are you happy? I'm very proud of it. Um, basically, I, I mean, I've been a scout leader for 40 years in October. Mm -hmm. um, God, is that how long it is? It's 40 years. Yeah. Um, and I've no idea to this day who put me in for it. I have a good idea. Um, 
Oh, so you have to be nominated. Somebody for... nominates you, right. and they get witness statements and things like that. Um, but basically, my MBE was for services to the community and the Scout Association in particular. Um, so yeah, it's just things you do in your community, things you do in scouting. Because mm, mm. you are quite a community like driven guy, aren't you? You do do a lot. Yeah. Like, he, yeah. He's just being modest now. He does a lot. Yeah. Um, but it's like my scout group where I was for 20, 20 years was on a council estate on Agfold. Mm. You know, we built it up to a, a big unit. Kids had never been abroad. We, we took them abroad every other year. We fundraise. We got grants. And mm. it's just basically a lot. Of, I, be, I believe a lot in mentoring people, be it bike riding. Uh, be it scouting, things like that, and just life skills really, just trying to make you a better person. Mm. So, yeah. And I got my Silver Wolf last year as well in the scouts. You got your Silver Wolf, yeah. which is a great achievement if you guys aren't, don't know Anybody much who's about Anybody who's a scout out there? So, yeah. yeah. But yeah, I mean, it's like, <clears throat> I mean, I don't know whether this is contentious for you, but it's, but it's like, I'm a Freemason as well. We do a lot of charity there. Mm -hmm. We just started um, a biking lodge in, uh, West Lancashire, which just meets four times a year on a Saturday morning. So if any Masons out there want to come and join us, come and yeah. join us. Hit me up. But uh, again, it it's this community thing. It's, you know, I mean, bloody hell, over the years we've raised money for send goats to Rwanda and places like that, you know, for give people a start. I mean, it's mm. female goats so they can get milk and they can yeah. have kids and, and whatever, blah, blah. Done all sorts of stuff like that. Done scout ups up in... South Africa and mm -hmm. just it's just 40 years worth of yeah. stuff really yeah because like you guys probably don't know this but like I was a, a scout at my dad's sort of uh, scout troop or group for for quite a while probably slight like explore age wasn't you were explore, yeah. and I have to say like we as a group went on some mad trips that like kids would never have got to experience yeah, yeah. if they hadn't gone like on like you hadn't arranged them because you did a lot of the arranging and stuff and yeah, obviously there's people Roger, that, Roger that, Smith, yeah. Roger Smith that, there's a lot of people that you know get involved in stuff but you kind of like you had it so every alternate year we go to the Isle of Man at an adventure centre mm. and it was just like when you're a kid and you're quite young trying to incorporate it around TT or Max Grand Prix time yeah there was like nothing better like going canoeing and like white water rafting walking. Gorge walking, all this Coast stuff. Coast 150 foot cliff abseil. You're jumping off cliffs, honestly. Like, how I look back, how I did that, I couldn't do it now. I've not got the bottle for it. Heights, <laughs> no, it doesn't do anything for me. But that was to show you, though, I had very good scout leaders mm. who encouraged us to do a lot of things. And basically, it was like, I mean, I had a hoot as a scout. I went to, say, I went to World Scout Jamboree. Mm. And you went to World Scout Jamboree. But it's giving kids, like I said, Primarily my scout group was on a council estate and I wanted to give them kids more mm. to aspire to something. They didn't have to stand on street corner, look kids, there's more out there for mm. you. And, and I'll <coughs> uh, get me on my soapbox a little bit here. But you look at the lads that we've got. I've got three, three of my lads, uh, NCOs in the army. One of the lads, Lewis, he drove the hearse uh, for the Duke of Edinburgh. You know, these are lads from council estate, good lads who've had a good grounding, They've had some good mentoring and some good leadership, and they've all become productive members of society. And like I said, Lewis, you don't get any finer <coughs> lad from Albert Nag full council estate, and he's got the responsibility of driving the Duke of Edinburgh's hearse at Windsor. You don't get more responsibility than that, does it? And yeah. these, are, these are just little lads who, at a young age, decided they wanted to come to Scouts, and they've become good men. Mm. You know? Yeah. yeah, all good. All good, all gravy. Right, and then he said, so one last question. So going back to the bikes, what would be your favorite place to go on a tour on your GS? So like maybe somewhere you haven't been before or somewhere that you really liked and you want to go back? Good question, there's a few places to be honest with you. I wouldn't mind going across America on a GS, but I wouldn't mind doing Iceland, mm. a tour all around Iceland. I said I'd like to take your mum in the car. Yeah. Because Iceland, if you've never been to Iceland, Go, fantastic place. Yeah. Um, and I've said to your mum I'd like to do it in a car. Probably take about ten days. Mm -hmm. But I would love to do it on a bike. Yeah. I would love to do it on a bike. That'd so be Iceland and America, I think. Mm. Yeah. Good shout, good shout. Right. Well, I think we're all out of questions. Sure. Yeah.
Nothing deep and philosophical? Uh, pepperoni pizza or ham and pineapple? Oh, pepperoni. Double pepperoni. <laughs> Do with triple extra pepperoni. pepperoni and some ham on it. And, yeah, just yeah. just a, like a mega meat feast, and a bit basically. Of, uh, donkey meat on it, a bit of salami, mm. something like that. Okay, okay. But no, no more philosophical questions. Um, okay, okay. Right, guys. Well, I hope you've enjoyed that Q&A with username Dad. Um, you can call me Steve if you want. <laughs> yeah, he doesn't mind Steve, that's fine. Um, but I've had, a, I've had a good time. Have you enjoyed answering these questions? Yeah. Um, Not, nothing too invasive? No, I mean, I must... I must... I think I've got a... YouTube login somewhere. I'll have, I'm not very tech, I'm a bit computer illegitimate really. <laughs> but <laughs> I'll get on to it because I've seen some of the questions like when people put on stuff like this mm. about using him and I think I'll reply to that. Oh shit, I don't know how to do it. <laughs> <laughs> how off the teacher so give some We'll lessons. get on that and probably start putting a few answers on for you and things like that. But I think it's great. I mean, the motorcycling community, you know, we we should stick together. Um you only have one life, don't you? Exactly. Have some fun. As Teapot One says, live your life. Live your life. I love yeah. Teapot One. Yeah, he's yeah. ace. Yeah, don't bother about anybody else, do you? Don't bother about what anybody else says or thinks. Do your own thing. Mm. Chat your own course. In fact, one thing that we're going to do is um, get some more GoPros, media mods, and then I can lend them out to Dad. He can get all kitted up with it. And uh, we can do some vlogs together where you're speaking because I feel <coughs> like there's a lot of time where because you're quite good with geography and history, but like, I feel like with the Great Arm video, you, yeah. you kind of had a lot to add, you know about. Oh wow! Like, wow! <laughs> wow! 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 <laughs> Take a shot every time Kate says wow. wow. It's a good drinking game though, right? No, but honestly, them views were so good I couldn't really like yeah. articulate what I wanted to say because it was just like. Wow, <laughs> like literally yeah. just a beautiful sea in the road. It was so yeah. good. But um, it'd be yeah. good that because like, you can have a good interaction like, here. Yeah. Blah blah blah, and here because you just know things through your infinite dad, wisdom. Dad knowledge. Dad knowledge. Yeah. So yeah, we'll have to do that and, and make that a thing because um, yeah. I know these guys would like to see it because they do do like you a lot. So. Yeah, right guys, well, I'm going to round it up there. If you guys haven't subscribed to the channel, please consider hitting that subscribe button. It really helps. This was a Patreon, you know, Q&A. If you want to join that as well, there is a link in the description below. Again, no pressure to do that. If you guys want to carry on watching my YouTube videos for free, you can do that twice weekly, Sundays and Thursdays. But yeah, hit that subscribe button. <laughs> and uh, until the next time, guys, take care. So uh, give him a wave, Dad. See you later. Do not iron. Hmm? Do not iron. <laughs> cool. Right, well, we'll, we'll film in, we're live, but okay. I can edit everything. Okay. So if you need to fart or burp. I don't care. I am what I am, Kate. I am what I oh, am. Oh, yeah, <laughs> And what I am needs no excuses. I don't think that's how it goes. Oh, you are right. Who's this on me? Take a, oh. take a wild stab. Is that yours? Are you just aiming them? Bikes are in for service, so we took got these from Boca. Just have a plan. Oh, that in it? Yeah, it's solo. She, she's on that. I'm on that. Right, I'm gone down. I'm just gonna take a chomp of this. Oh. So, as I was saying, oh god, I'm talking my mouth full. Oh. You happy with that? Oh, it's not recorded. Hey? <laughs> it has really. Did I scare you? No. It's on one percent battery. No.